All right, the evolution. Before we talk about the transformation, let's talk about the evolution of the retail model. Retail model, we have actually have four evolution. The first one, the traditional retailer, retail model 1.0, okay, with these three criteria, competitive price, varieties, and convenient. So when we talk about, first thing, convenient, what we think about the traditional retailers, what we think about, we think about convenience store or grocery shop, right? We think about mini market. Why? Because this is nearby to us. If you want to buy something, it's very near to us. But, but the price is not the cheapest. They do not have a lot of varieties as well, right? The, then when we talk about competitive price, the lower price, the cheapest price, we think about what? We think about the wholesaler, like for example, GM Clang, for example, Wholesale City. So their price is cheap, but is it convenient? Is it varieties a lot? I don't think so. But when we talk about varieties, what will happen? What, are, what is in our mind? It's a departmental store. They sell vegetable, they sell sundries product, they sell uh, apparel, they sell electrical products and so on. The varieties is a lot, but the price is not the cheapest. They are not convenient as well. So the point that I want to bring up here is retail model 1.0, you only able to fulfill one of it, either competitive price, either varieties or either convenient. You only able to fulfill one. All right. What about retail model 2.0? Okay, retail model 2.0, you can actually fulfill two. For example, competitive price and variety. So some of the large brands like Ikea, okay, the price is actually um, slightly cheaper compared to some of the um, furniture shop. And the variety is a lot. They sell household product, they sell kitchenware, they sell uh, kitchenware accessories, sofa, bed, they even sell food at the uh, food court, right? So the variety is a lot. When we talk about competitive price plus convenient, it's like those chain store, Ubiso, Miniso, or Daiso, the price is cheap. And when you go in, I believe that a lot of people like to go because they can buy a lot of household things, you can buy a lot of things for the husband, for the wife, for the kids and so on. It's co considered convenient. And the third about varieties and convenient is on the catalog sales, like TV sales. Sometimes, you know, we see some of the TV program like 8TV or NTV7, they actually sell something, right? So the variety is a lot. Like today, they are actually selling a vacuum machine. Tomorrow, probably, they are selling a bed sheet. Next day, they are selling a Tupperware, for example. So this is about the, the varieties. And how about the convenient? How convenient is it? The customer just need to stay at home, watch TV. If they're interesting or interested on a product, they just place order through the handphone. It's so convenient, right? So in the retail model 2.0, it's actually able to fulfill two points, either competitive price with varieties, competitive price with convenient, or varieties plus convenient, okay? So next is on the retail model 3.0, which is the e-commerce. Just now we have explained some of the advantages, what some of the um, yeah, advantages of the e-commerce. They're able to fulfill three points, which is the competitive price, the varieties, and convenience. All right. And what about the retail model 4.0? I will keep that in a secret. Uh, I will keep that for myself first because I want to ensure that everyone stay until my sharing session so that later on I will explain. I will disclose to you what is the specialty of retail model 4.0. All right. So let's have a refresh back. The four perspectives to determine the trend. First is on the consumer part. Second is on the retailer part. So we have covered these two. And third is on the industry revolution of government policies. Okay. So now let's talk about the first, oh, sorry, the third um, perspective, which is on the industry revolution. So before I start, right, I will, I will need to tell you that regardless you're in which generation, right? So when the re industry revolution change, you have to accept, okay? No matter you like it or not, you have to accept. So let's see the first industry revolution, industry 1.0, okay? Previously, a lot of people, they want to travel, they want to go out to the sea, they're having the small boat, right? Okay, 
how the boat moves is actually depend on the direction of the wind. The direction of the wind, if go to the, the west, then you have to go to the west. Go to the east, then you have to go to the east. It depends on the wind, right? But during Industry 1.0, they have invented this called steam power. And they have come up with the steam uh, steamboat or steamship. So the steamship actually is replacing the boat. All right. Industry 2.0, during the time, a lot of people using what? Using the horse carriage in Mandarin called Ma Che, right? Ma Che. So during Industry 2.0, they actually invented this called electrical energy. So they come up with car. So the car actually replacing, replacing what? Replacing the horse carriage. Third, Industry 3.0 is automotive, computer, and electronic like computer, your iPhone, your iPad, your um, iPod and so on. Okay, Industry 3.0, during the time, a lot of people still using what? Uh, looking at the traditional physical newspaper, still listening radios, right? But when laptop, iPhone, when I invented this thing, this is actually to replace the physical newspaper because a lot of people using the handphone to see e-news. Am I right? So what about Industry 4.0? In fact, Industry 4.0 is about AI, AI technology. And I can tell you that in the future, AI will be replacing some of the manpower. For instance, some of the manufacturing industries, previously they have so many uh, manpower need to prepare all those things. But in the future, with the AI, okay, they can cut down some of the resources, cut down some of the manpower, and put this manpower into the right place, or more, if productive place okay so this is about ai okay as i promised you uh just now the about the first picture right is on the ai technology on the post terminal right so let me share with you further on the detail part on this cost smart self-service checkout solution where i actually took this um image during my uh, visits to taipei during the computex Okay, let's see. Look, let's look into this picture. The first picture, this customer, okay, bring the products to the kiosk. What they need to do, second step, they just need to choose whether they are the member type or they are the non-member type, which is the guest. Okay, assuming after I choose my member type, what I need to do next, I just need to press on the scan. Okay, can you see that on the first picture, on top there's one camera, one scanner. So this is, the things that they scan on the products which on the trade so once they scan already you can see that this product and the quantity is actually show up okay so what they need to do next they just proceed to payment by using the rfid card that's all to complete one sales process imagine if let's say today there we still have a lot of cashiers standing there scan one by one of the product but if let's say some of the product cannot be scanned they need to call the supervisor or they need to manually key in the barcode right so it will actually make the the queue longer imagine if in the future if this thing be implemented into the retailers how convenient is it am i right so i have another example to show you this is also been taken during the computex uh, on bakery's product bread bun okay what you need to do the consumer just need to bring the things to bring the bun the bakery's on the put on the tray then the scanner will start scan the dimension the the size the length of the, the products that will display on the right hand side then they can proceed with the payment that's all so this is about ai technology which can apply in the retail industry on the post terminal okay all right let me proceed further on the government policies so refresh back the first perspective consumer Second perspective, retailers. Third perspective, the, the what? Industry revolution. And fourth, government policies. Okay, why we think that the government policies play an important role, you know, to, to decide, to determine this uh, future trend? Because we believe that with the support of the government policies, this will actually make the process even faster or even smoother. Let me show you an example. Yeah. Uh, beginning of this year, right, the government actually um, 
encourage that encourage this uh cashless society you know with this e to nine rakyat that's why during the time they actually give a e to nine uh, rakyat of uh, 30 ringgit for those who earn less than 100 k right so with these policies i can tell you that they have actually speed up the implementation process especially now during this COVID 19 period i can tell you that i spend i go out to buy something i'm using e-wallet I try to minimize by using cash because I want to minimize the contact with each other. You see? So I believe that during this period, there are more and more people using e-wallets. All right. For information, our solution, IRS software, we already integrate with various kind of uh, e-wallets. Okay. Our partner is actually IP88. So if you are interested or you have any questions regarding the e-wallet applications, then you can actually PM us message us then we will have a personnel to contact you all right so this is also another another programs okay that come out by government so during the budget 2020 they have announced that they actually have a matching grant sma digitalization matching grant of 50 percent or even up to five thousand for the sme to claim right the five digitalization area is on the digital marketing the e-post, the HR payroll system, the procurement system, and the accounting system. Okay, these are five digitalization area where the SME can claim. So for your information, IRS is also one of the appointed technology solution provider to uh, support on this SME business digitalization business grant program. So please stay until the end because later on, I will have some offer to you regarding this a matching grant okay all right this is on 5g do you know that our ex minister or our ex uh i was saying ex government uh, okay they are actually quite support on this 5g technology because the thing that every 5g technology right will impact different different industries to growth of the economy of the malaysia okay this is a priority things that malaysia need to do is to grow on the economic right so I have a given an example, a comparison between 3G, 4G, and 5G. All right, 3G, the speed is on 384 kilobyte. 4G, 100 megabyte per second. 5G is even up to 10 gigabyte per second. And a lot of us, we may think that how fast is 3G with 384, 4G, 100, and 5G, 10 gigabyte. Let me give an example, a scenario. If you want to download a two hours video, with a 3G solution or 3G technology, what you need to do, you need 26 hours. Equivalent to you fly from Malaysia to London through and flow, come back, then only your video will be completed. How about 4G? 4G, you just need six minutes. I think a lot of people now like to do Tabata, right? During this COVID-19 period, MCO period. So after one set of the Tabata, then your, four, your two hours video will be completed and what about 5g imagine 5g 5g to download one two hours video you only need 3.6 second which equivalent to you just blink your eye you just blink your eye once then the, the video the movie is downloaded interesting right 